In this episode, we're here to talk about Weston McKinney, the man, the myth, the legend. Well, sort of. He just moved to Juventus. What does it mean for them, and what does it mean for Shaka? Stay tuned. Weston McKinney just joined Juventus, and many people, at least in Syria, are wondering, who is Weston McKinney? Sam, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Please pull up any relevant information on Weston McKinney. Weston James Earl McKinney is an American soccer player who plays as a midfielder. He stands 6 foot 1 and weighs 185 pounds. Last season he scored his career best 3 goals and recorded 8 yellows. He also scored a hat-trick versus Cuba last season. He only just turned 22 years old today. Happy birthday Wes! Weston is, is a true jack of all trade. He has played every position on the pitch except for goaltender. And I'm pretty sure he's played goaltender in practice. But in terms of league play, he's played every position. That's the one downfall, the, one of the major downfalls as a Schalke fan, what I see from Weston McKinney. His development has been hindered because of this. Throughout his tenure, he's played, been forced to play. He's mostly a midfielder. He's a box-to-box -box midfielder. Sometimes plays as a number six or an eight, uh, at times a ten. But he's played all over the pitch, and uh, his managers, because he's so versatile, uh, have put him in wherever they, they needed him because of injuries or what have you. Um, Wesson has been plugged into the systems, playing at center back, midfield, and attack, uh, played as striker as well. He's done it all. So what can Juventus fans expect out of him? Weston is a true box-to-box -box midfielder. He's a number eight. He said so himself in many interviews where he says he prefers to be a box-to-box -box midfielder because he loves to be in the attack, loves to be in the defense as well. Uh, he doesn't like to be pigeonholed into one position or not. His quote is, don't put me in attack or don't put me in defense. Just, just tell me to play out there and I can play in attack and defense. When he was under Domenico Tedesco, he played primarily as a number six. Uh, usually in a double pivot next to either Max Meyer or Leon Goretzka, uh, but always played in the sixth, sixth position. Even when, when those players left, he played predominantly in number six. Um, while good in that position, he's very, he's very intelligent for his, for his age. Uh, he's, he's got good speed, but he's good, got physicality, he has good athleticism, and he can really thrive in, in many positions. But as a, as a number six, uh, defensive duties, he does a good job, and, and it's an admirable job, but that's not his strength. His strength is using his athleticism to his advantage and going up in attack or you know, going after loose balls, getting in the box, and playing in a sixth position really hinders him from doing that. Uh, playing him in, in either the right back or left back position or center back definitely hinders his his progression as well uh, and then playing in the attack or in the wing spots it doesn't help at, at all he can do it he can do a decent job but uh, that's not where you want him you want him as a number eight uh, he, he might be able to play number 10 position but um, you know, going to Juventus they got plenty of number 10s so plenty of 10 options that they have at their disposal so and number eight is what he needs he's an engine room guy the teams always that he's what he's been on have always fed off his energy he is like the the fire starter of the team. He gets the team mojo going. When the team is down, he can fire them up quickly on the field. Uh, whether it's for Schalke, whether it's for the U.S. men's national team, I have no doubt he will do this with Juventus. While Blas Matuidi is a fine player, he doesn't have the rallying spirits that Weston McKinney does. So Weston McKinney has that innate ability to bring a team together, bring them up in time, especially when times get tough. To look at McKinney, you really can't look at just last season. Last season was a little bit unfair to judge him on, mostly because Schalke weren't very good. Uh, but if you look at his entire career, you can see there's definitely a progression with him. The main thing with him, as many Shaka fans will tell you, is his inconsistency. But a lot of that could be, have to do with his teammates. Uh, he's going to a considerable upgrade at Juventus from Shaka. And no disrespect to Shaka, but the Juventus players, I mean, they got Ronaldo on their team, Paulo Dybala, Buffon. I mean, they got some legends on that team over there. So uh, he will benefit greatly, not only for himself, but also for the U.S. men's national team and Juventus. Uh, again, that engine room guy, he's going to give you 100% for whatever amount of minutes he's out there. He doesn't tire very easily. Uh, he will bring that tenacity for them. And in the air, he very few people in the world can out jump, out get a ball by him. Ronaldo certainly can, but there's very few in the world that can out jump Weston McKinney. He's got amazing jumping ability. He's such a threat at corner kicks or set, any kind of set pieces. He's got to work on his accuracy with his header, but uh, he's there every time. He's sniffing around. He scores more goals for U.S. Men's National Team than he did for Schalke. But again, that could be a product of the team that he played for, not necessarily his skill set. We shall see. I'm going to pay very close attention to Wes when he's at Juventus because 
I expect Pirlo is going to try to uh, mold him into a, a very successful player. Whatever position he instills him in, like I said, I believe it's a six, an eight position. Uh, he's a tenacity engine room guy. Uh, that's what's, that's the main talent he's going to bring to them. Richard, to further your point. Andrea Pirlo said at his first presser, and I quote, I told the lads two things. You always have to keep the ball, and when you lose it, you must get it back quickly. Enthusiasm must be brought day by day. Quality players can play together in any team. The important thing is that everyone are ready to sacrifice and willing to work for others. We must be willing to make sacrifices when there's a goal. We must reach it all together. If this doesn't encapsulate Weston McKenney in the eight position, I don't know what does. It sounds like he was hand chosen by Il Maestro himself. Now I said I said you have to look at his whole career, but you know if we look at last season in particular, um, he really got he was really weak at the beginning of the season and got really strong as the season went on. One of his best games was towards the end of the season. Really, his last four or five games of the season, he was probably the best man of the match of every one of those games. The, the score lines didn't do well for Schalke, but he was a very good player in those games. Uh, in particular, games like Leverkusen. Uh, defensively, he was pinpoint on there. You know, Leverkusen is a very talented offensive team, and Schalke had to deploy a very defensive system in that game. And Weston McKinney was crucial in that game to stop stopping all the passes, cutting out, making, being positionally sound, being intelligent defensively uh, to keep out, uh, keep Bayer from scoring any kind of goal. So Weston McKinney can do the job defensively, can also do the job off offensively as well. We've seen him, especially with the US, U.S. men's national team. He gets involved in a lot of the offensive plays, and in those in those teams, he tends to play either a ten or the eight uh, position. And the U.S. men's national team has scored many goals while he's been on the pitch. Obviously, it helps to have guys like Pulisic and and Gio Reyna and some of these other guys. But uh, McKenney definitely stands out when he's with the U.S. men's national team. And I, I believe uh, under Pirlo, under Juventus, he's gonna he's gonna step up. He's going to really bring up his game. Uh, to the next level, and I, I, I'm excited to see what he can do for Juventus. Like I said, he's not going to be your superstar player for Juventus. He may turn out to be, don't get me wrong, but I'm fully expecting him to be that engine room guy who's going to be able to uh, go after the dirty balls, you know, dig deep, show passion, keep the team in the game at all times. That's the kind of guy Wes is. He's a leader on the pitch and off the pitch. Uh, he's very vocal. Uh, so you'll see that from him. He'll he'll learn the he'll learn the language in no no time. He spoke German very fine, uh, and I and I and I can imagine he'll learn Italian very well. Obviously, with guys like Aaron Ramsey, some of the guys speak English. It'll help, uh, and Pirlo as well. But he'll pick up the language no problem. And obviously, Matthias de Ligt uh, will help as well there. So um, yeah, look forward to Weston McKinney joining Juventus. I will pay close attention to him. Now, what does that mean for Schalke? I mean, the, this deal was a steal for me with Juventus. They did a Juventus style uh, deal on this one. I mean, it was a $3 million up front with a, with a possibility of 18 million. And if the, it was all these scenarios, well, if they make Champions League, they have to pay that money. Or if he plays 60% of the games, whatever it is, it's a steal for Juventus. I think, and I said this in another video before, that he's really should be, he really shouldn't be going for like, you know, 30, 40 million euros. And because Schalke put themselves in a position telling the whole world that they're strapped for money, that really didn't put them in the advantage or the leverage when it comes to negotiating. And most teams that came out with 18 to 21 million euros, and that's kind of how it's been. And no one's been offering more because they know Schalke need the money. They're desperate to, to get the money. So uh, with that, Juventus get a steal. They only put up $3 million up front. Meanwhile, Schalke, what are they doing? I mean, they need money, and they only, they only get three money, three million guaranteed. And you know, he has to make these certain clauses before uh, with Juventus before he even get they even get more money. I mean, what are they doing? They're not reinvesting the team whatsoever. So, you know, from the Shaka perspective, Shaka point of view, this doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, sad to see a player like him go because he is like one of the one of, one of the team players, uh, one of the most passionate people on that team. Um, and one of the better players, he was definitely on, on, on one of the most talented guys on the team and uh, really drove that team and it really kept the spirit alive. And they're going to miss that. They're, they're not going to have the veteran leadership. And yes, he is a veteran for them because he started for them the last three, three years or so. Um, so they're going to miss him. Uh, so I think it's Juventus' gain and Schalke's loss. And uh, let's see what the season holds. Uh, well, I, I'll definitely want to do a recap here after a few months into the season to see how he's doing, how he's progressing. Uh, but I, I expect, you know, with 
uh, Andrea Pirlo at the helm at Juventus. He's going to get his opportunities, obviously having uh, Bentacur there and, and Rabio and, and uh, Arthur coming in. It's going to be hard to get on that team, but they're going to rotate. They're, they're going to be in many competitions. He's going to get the pitch time, and what he does when he's on the pitch is going to be key, and I think he'll do well for them. Um, and it's going, be a, it's going to be one of the pickups of the season, I think, uh, come the end of the season for Juventus. So that's that's my two cents on Weston McKinney going to Juventus, leaving Schalke. What are your thoughts on him? Did you know much about him before? Leave in the comments. Let me know if you've even heard of him before, if you knew about him. Uh, did you know a lot? Did you know a little bit? Uh, let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe, uh, like, leave comments. Uh, it's not only subscribe to this page, but subscribe to all the other pages. You know, of the Shock America and Syria. Sit down. Uh, you're gonna get as much information as possible with them. But thank you once again for tuning in. Hope you enjoy this video. Hope you enjoy the, the the moves that both teams made. It's gonna be it's gonna be curious to see who who gets the better end of this deal. I'm thinking it's Juventus. That's just me. We'll catch you in the next episode.